Chase Dowling. But the man who surprised everybody looking like the old bulldog that we used to know, Eric Burke. So we will have some fireworks ready to light the fuse. He's Rocco, the point leader, but it is still early in the season. As they used to say on Jeopardy, the scores can really change. SJ modified point standings. Keith Rocco is the leader by 32 over Ronnie Williams, Michael Jervis, Rowan Pennick, Matt Galco, Joey Cipriano, Michael Christopher, Eric Burns, Chase Dowling, and Todd Owen to round out the top 10. So then the moment of truth has arrived. A front row populated by Daniel Wesson and Tyler Hines, and we are ready to turn it loose. the wall underneath the wheel inside. It's the white car could be the Peter LaFouche machine. We're not sure. I think that's a double zero, perhaps, of nope. Tommy Bermino, who drove off the wall. We have a car stranded in turn four. And it's David Arutz, number 75 car. And the 24 of Josh Wood. First start. It will be the 92 of Daniel Wesson on the inside. And on the outside, it will be Tyler Hines. As uh, Daniel Wesson said, he has learned a lot in the early part of the season. They made a lot of changes on that car. As uh, the one consistent is, he's usually the fastest practice car. And what hasn't been consistent is the changes that they have made in the car as they keep trying to get that car faster. Kopchik and Galco in the second row. So we get ready to fire them up as the torpedoes are ready to leave the tubes. Here they come. The ammunition is loaded, and the gun has just been fired. Bottom of turn number one, Wesson continues to dig deep on the inside, but Tyler High has a little power assist from Galco Matt and Todd Owen. More than hungry. Damage, I think, might be the proper reading word. Yeah, but he has a strong move left in him as he invades the top five, getting the jump on Troy Tallman at the front of the field. Down low, Kajan. He has momentum against Daniel Wesson. Meanwhile, while all this has been happening, Kopsik gives him a shot to bumper. It would jar the Phillips in anyone's game. We've got a spin in turn number four. This is the second caution of the event, three laps in. If they get either Glenn Reed to do double duty, then that car becomes the evil stepchild. It's kind of neglected and left on the end. They win wicked motorsports. So Ryan Priest will be getting a penalty for over-aggression. So the 40 will have to go to the rear. Once again, he'll have a lot of time in, the left, uh, in which to get back to the front. He's had a tough time in practice today with that car, Matt. He's been inconsistent uh, yes. last week and this week. Yeah, something went wrong with it in practice. He really had to struggle to uh, be able to come out. He actually came out with the tour type modifieds before qualifying of the twisted T80. So here we go. We're back up through the gears. And Wesson does a masterful job of still trying to hold on. Stephen Coxon. And Coxon is good on the inside and on the outside as he tries to barnstorm his way into the lead against Wesson. There's no question about it. As Coxon continues to keep digging in that upper lane, Galco is right there. And Eric Burke, the Bulldog, is also found a home among the top eight cars. Yeah, he's in that top group. Very distraught last week was Matt Galco. Wasn't happy at all with the way he performed. He said he expected to battle Chase Dowling all the way to the wire, and it never happened. So he is all looking for a much smoother run tonight. Look at that bid for the lead now. Kopsik completely changed his line and changed the group. Oh, what a crossover move by Cipriano. He took Kopsik by surprise, moving into 
second. Thompson continues to try to dig in hard at the outside. But Joey Cipriano, and look at Todd Owen. The man who never gives up. Put the white number 81 into the fourth spot. And while all that's been happening, Roman Penning and a cast of others are threading the needle through traffic. But Ronnie Williams is in seventh. Here in Warren, he has been out in front. Wesson has got his hands full because Joey Cipriano just blasted by him. Cipriano made the move of the race to get into second, and then he just wore out Wesson. Wesson hanging on. You can see it means an object. Now on the outside, it's Todd Owen, and right behind Owen is Ronnie Williams. So Ronnie Williams having a very smooth run here in the early going. Ronnie Williams has been consistently on the podium. There is really no surprises there whatsoever. surprises that are starting to come to light. And among them is Dean Avery. Last is car on the racetrack. Joey Cipriano. Thompson is still running in second. Weston is still in the third spot. And Owen is still up to the fourth position. Mike Christopher has moved into the top ten. He's ninth. And it is ten. And we have a map going for third and fourth. Wesson is trying to hold off Todd Owen. Owen darting to the outside, and Ronnie Williams right behind them. Here comes Owen, going to work inside. Find a car inside Wesson, and Wesson won't allow it to happen. Owen continues to just do everything right in an effort to hold off. And we're coming up on lap number 13, Matt, and we know what that means. It could be a $125 bonus for Joe. Cipriano, and it is, as he leads lap number 13, Kevin Harvick surprised him with a $125 bonus. Now the man Owen getting underneath Wesson, and who's the tail that wags a dog there, Matt? Right there, oh! He oh. had enough room to make the move, a calculated move, and now here comes Ronnie Williams with a bottom shot maneuver. Williams takes Owen up the hill. Surprises here as now Williams moves into the top three. Meanwhile, the Bulldog making some magic at the bottom. And here comes Rowan Penning, also right there, Michael Christopher. Martin Stretch is seventh. And his outfit is Rowan Penning. And at the front of the field, Cipriano leading by a broomstick over the number 31 at Topchick. One of the most underrated, very underrated drivers in the division. Trouble now. Look at the smoke erupting. And all of a sudden, no question about it, race has blown up like a tea kettle. And there was a couple of more cars down here in turn number one. Cipriano, 
remember those SK Light drivers that provided so many thrills are all here tonight. Tommy Barrett, Joey Cipriano, and Matt Galco. Here they come. Down to the line, Cipriano. Looking good. Oh, up in the loose stop. Cipriano's car develops a caffeine switch. And somebody gets hammered. That is Tommy Marino in between turns one and two to bring out another yellow. So the Membrino Racing number double zero gets kicked to the curb. So 17 laps are complete. We'll readjust the field. And we will go back into double file. And Ronnie Williams this time has been elevated to the front row alongside Joey Zipcry. We didn't have a ride last year in the SK Modified. He was in a late model. And uh, he wanted to get back. And, uh, Cool, and now has helped out a lot of drivers over the years as uh, made it happen for Joey Cipriano. He has been close on many occasions, has never been able to land a big one. Could tonight be his night? Certainly could be, but there is a lot of different combinations in this one on how it could all shake out. Here they come. Good start again. textbook and they're wheel to wheel and everybody is able to make it through the first and second corners here comes Williams and there comes Matty Galco Opsic still is there and so is it Cipriano well Williams is tough on the outside and he boogies his way into the lead no leader Ronnie Williams but not for long now the back straight away Williams still by a Eric Burke, the Bulldog, up among the top six. Well, these are the breathtaking battles that Stafford's SK Modified are famous for. Williams on the outside. And now, the one try Cipriano as they torpedo their way into the third quarter. They almost come together, and here is Cipriano trying to catapult his way back into the lead. There's no question about it, and here comes Rowan Pettit. Also, threading the needle for traffic. Side by side, racing still for the lead. And it is a new town nuke. Steve Coptic trying to get into the top two. It is Cipriano leading the way, but sitting on his lap is Ronnie Williams. Cipriano has a lead all over him like stitches on a baseball is Ronnie Williams. And Eric Burke really holding tough in the number four position. Eric Burke has been so long overdue for success. He has been quick each and every time out. And now he's working over Copsick. Meanwhile, back to the front of the class, Joey Cipriano. trying to clear Cipriano. Let's see what happens as they helter-skelter their way into turn number four. It looks like Williams will beat Cipriano to the line by a cookie crumb. Certainly does. But the big question is 23 up on the board. Seven. Still counting down. A battle for the ages between Joey Cipriano and Ronnie Williams. Now Williams captures the lead. Continues to dig in on the outside and dig in hard. Meanwhile, further back in the field, Daniel Wesson has come back to life. But for Keith Rocco, he's struggling, and Matty Galco's car is also backing up that. Galco is in the 11th spot, and Rocco is in the 12th position. Now, Williams and Cipriano have been side-by-side side since lap 17 for nine laps. Half a car length advantage for Williams. Can he keep it inside leverage for Cipriano? And now, after nine laps, Ronnie Williams is able to clear Cipriano. The hot dog machine for Vassar is spun to the center of the infield. Kopchik gets by Cipriano to and move it a second yellow. as the yellow comes out. And that will negate the move by Thompson here in Burke. Never surprised at his runs. They're always good. Otto and Dan Avery and Glenn Reeve, their teammates, 
and they're coming through the front as a dynamic duo in the seventh and eighth spot. Michael Jervis is up to ninth, and Wesson, he started up front as his back back to tenth, but he's still holding off Keith Rocco for that tenth position. So he's not done yet by any stretch of the imagination. Ronnie Williams has had an amazing year. Three second place finishes, a third, a fourth, but no victories. He'll have to be at the top of his game now against Cipriano on the inside. They swoop on their way into the corner, and Ronnie Williams trying to pull away from Joey Zip Drive. Williams is down, down the back straightaway. Wesson is in trouble. Everybody is scrambling, and we've literally got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars. Making contact. Now seven is Mike Christopher is the first to drive away. And then it looks like the 75 of David Arute is among the cars to drive away. As they were lined up. Right and ejected Josh Wood here in the number 24 pits. And that scooter that he mentioned is one of the good guys. He is Scott one of the Myers. Good guys. Yes. And yes. Scott Myers, and he's been working on Todd Owens' cars for a long time. He certainly is. He's a spotter. He can do most anything. He's an amazing electrician when it comes to wiring the cars, the dashboards, and everything else. So, uh, good guy all the way around, and he's been around the sport a long, long time. Kind of one of those unsung heroes of this racing business. Here we go again, 26 of 40, 14 to go. The nutrition rate has been a little bit high, but right now the high is who's going to get into turn number one first, and Williams does it with ease, but Cipriano is right there, and to the outside of Kopsik, here is Eric Burke, the Bulldog. No surprises there, Matt. We've been saying he's going to be coming, and he is. Just like he did last week. He's trying to get around Joey Cipriano, and he is able to tap dance his way around the 78, moving into second, and he is going after Ronnie Williams. And you wonder how much Ronnie Williams abused his car during that nine laps that he battled Cipriano on the outside groove. There's no question about it. It's a great battle right there. Still side by side. Now Owens has moved into the third spot. Well, outside group looks like the place to be. At least it was for Todd Owen. Right behind him is Glenn Ring, the black number 17 with the golden numerals. And he is trying to get by the 31. And so is his teammate, Dan Avery. Avery has been very quiet but very cautious. Lap after lap, continuing to thread the needle. Six car all of a sudden is becoming evil and starting to back up just a bit. Meanwhile, Keith Rocco's car, all of a sudden, it isn't as strong as before, and it seems to have a little what Matt calls a stutter step. Yeah, he is down to ninth place, so there's a long way for him to go to catch up to Ronnie Williams. And Michael Jarvis is not giving up. As he is adhesive tape in the back bumper of that Rocco car. So, um, and here is a, a move made by Jarvis to get underneath Rocco. He tried it, but it just didn't happen the way that he wanted it to. Well, you very seldom see Rocco get passed like that, the way Jarvis just did. Now, the battle for second is up for grabs between Burt and Owen. Burn just clicked off the quickest lap of the race. And Todd Owen is waiting right there on the podium with him. Meanwhile, we also see that Rowan Pennick is in a Donnybrook battle with Glenn Reed. That's another good battle going on. involved. Missouri is another one of those cars. Seatbelt, designate a sober driver. Buckle up. Slow down. We want you to arrive alive. Lights are off on the safety vehicle. They head down the back straight away. Bonnie Williams, Eric Burke, Todd Owen, Joey Cipriano, Glenn Reen, Rowan Pettick, Stephen Kopsick, Dan Avery, Michael Jervis, Keith Rocco, 
That's how they stand in the top ten. Feel the thunder beneath your feet. The green is out. And it is Williams. But high, wide, and handsome comes Eric Byrne on the outside. As Byrne got some knee pop coming off the corner. So here comes Owen. Four, very friendly. Owen is sideways. He will recover, but loses about five positions. Owen. Hard developed to twitch. It cost him more than five, about eight positions on the racetrack. Well, you remember the side by side battle between Sippery and Owen Williams. We could have another one, but Williams decides to put his foot down and he rapid rouses his way on into the lead. Here comes Burke charging back at him. Everybody makes it through the first two got quarters. Two cars down in turn number one, but not Mike Christopher. And yes. also there with him is the 11 Levin. car of Matt Vassar. And the number 15 has uh, fallen off. Ronnie Williams, he said he knew after his first practice with the Adam Scavora team that he made the right move to join those guys. He said they had the perfect chemistry right from the beginning. We'll see how that chemistry is going to work now because he's had consistent runs, but he's been looking for that proverbial victory, and they are so long overdue. And the same can be said about Eric Burke, the Bulldog. Another good start. Down to the bottom of one. Williams has it again. Not by much. No look at Rowan Pennant. Big steam, big giddy up beneath the hood there. And around the turn. Can he save it? Car darts toward the wall. Bounces off the wall. That is Rowan Pennant. They are shell the wall. Started with a twitch from Bird, he was able to gather it back in. The Rowan Panic, he hand grenaded his way in, and I think they have the right area code tonight. I think you're right, Matt. You know, when when he came back to racing after a long period of being out of the business, he had a CD car, had a victory with it here at the Speedway, and then last year they purchased a car from Tommy Bowles. They didn't like the car that much, and he said, I'm going to do something completely different. And that seemed to be the combination that we're seeing now, and it seems to work as uh, his protege is right there with him. Let's see what's going to happen as we get him fired back up again. And Dan Avery has plenty of steam, and we see some smoke coming off. That's a conscious car. Yep, looks like the composite machine. But out in front, it's still Williams. Glenn Rean giving him a battle. Rean in his hip pocket. Here is Glenn Rean, dive bobbing his way off the corner. And it is Rean to take over the lead, but only for a short period of time. Now Williams trying to get his groove back. They are side by side. Williams straightens it out. A little extra giddy up. Two circuits remaining. They come back to the stripe. Who's it going to be at the line? Williams by inches. He got a little high in the corner. Gave him momentum. And now he tries to swing shot his way around Glenn Rain. Deep down into turn number three. Off turn number four. Glenn Reed, a late event bid. Ladies and gentlemen, get up at the edge of your seats. It's Williams to take down the win. Glenn Reed to finish. As it Two, is. Here comes Williams on the outside. Reed trying to fight back. Ronnie Williams gangbusters his way into the corner. Ronnie Williams clears at 17. Here is Ronnie Williams at car number 50. Ronnie Williams has it at the line. Glenn Reed will finish in second. Dan Avery for third. Michael Jarvis for fourth. Matt Galco will finish in our 20th. Daniel West in 21st. In 22nd was Josh Wood. Roy Talman, 23rd. 24th, Tyler Hines. 25th, Tony Mimbru, Tommy Mimbruno Jr. And we're not going to say this very often. Ryan Priest finishes last in 26. And uh, the impressive thing today, Ronnie Williams picks up 50 points. Keith Rocco picks up 40. So the lead will be down to 22 with plenty of season left. Certainly has. 
And Doug Mazzurvi will pick up the 13th place finisher, Matt. And you know what that means. That means $125 from Kevin Harvick. So we thank Kevin Harvick. So our two winners tonight, I believe, Joey Simonano and Doug Mazzurvi. Out of the car is Ronnie Williams, and he is getting ready to talk to Joe Koss. All smiles tonight, Ronnie Williams and the Scavora team. Ronnie, uh, there was nothing about that win that looked easy. How hard was it behind the wheel fighting off all those hard chargers? Yeah, I would have appreciated one of those cautions last week, but uh, no, I'm happy we got in victory lane. Um, the guys I was racing against, uh, definitely raced me clean. I think Glenn could have done a lot to me in the final corner and final couple laps. So, um, just overall, it was a great win. I can't thank the Adam guys enough. Um, they've been bugging me all year about getting steak on Tuesday. So, we'll be getting steak on Tuesday. But awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you. Glenn Reed comes in to offer congratulations. You make a big move in the offseason after running your family operation for many, many years with a lot of success. The year started off slow, but now that you've gotten the victory, does it validate the move to the 50 team this year? Yeah, I said once we get one, we're just going to start picking them off, so watch out for us in the future. Uh, we can still make this thing a little bit better, so that's a little scary, but uh, I can't thank these guys enough, like I said. Uh, Empower Financial, West Auto Center, All Town, uh, Center Machine, Better Race Engines, uh, Palmer Paving, um, and like I said, this entire uh, group of guys here, they're one of a kind, and it's definitely awesome to have them on our side. Stake on Tuesday, Rodney Williams is buying. He wins tonight in the SK Modifieds. Okay, let's talk to our second place finisher, Glenn Reen, still getting some pictures taken. Come on over here, Glenn. Great piece of driving, man, a 17R, man, coming towards the front tonight. You've got to be happy with that run, Glenn. Yeah, i got to thank the good Lord for the opportunity to be here and for Dan Avery. I, uh, I wouldn't be anything without Dan. From a small kid at Riverside Park watching him and picking him as my as my hero, sitting in his car about 20-something years ago, and then he asked me to drive for him, and these new cars are awesome. Uh, these Troyer race cars are, are unbelievable. i got to thank Matt Hirschman uh, for building two great cars, uh, as you can see, the, they're right here. We almost had something for the 50. I just got a little bit too tight. Uh, that was probably the most fun battle we've had, and I'm sure the fans would agree that, too. But i got to thank... Uh, Rats Automotive for great power. I gotta thank my uncle Ralph for building both motors for Dan and I. I gotta thank Pioneer Valley Wheel Repair, Paganelli Construction, Horsepower Hill Farm, Avery Construction as well, uh, Tech Ed Products, and uh, just his whole team and all the guys. They work their butts off every single week, and we've had some downtime and some rough times, so I'm happy. And tomorrow's my birthday, so I wish I was one more spot, but I'll take it. Happy birthday to Glenn Reed. He puts that 17 R to second place. Let's talk to Dan Avery in the 10 A car. Dan coming out strong, especially towards the end of the main event. Dan, come on over here, buddy. Victory Lane. Veteran driver Dan Avery. Man, the 10A was flying tonight. It was a lot of fun watching you come through the pack and a uh, good piece of driving. Oh, man, I tell you, the doors opened up for us. The car was great. And, uh, you know, we had a little luck on our side. Fast race car, a lot of good help. And uh, that little bobble there in uh, turn four when everybody kind of got into a little skirmish there, bent the right front spindle. I was kind of just hanging on at the end, but I'll take it. Then I tell you, we got the you know, cars in one piece, and uh, great run. Team car finished second, and congratulations to, to the 50 car and uh, Ronnie Williams and that gang. Absolutely great to have you back here at Stafford, Dan. Congratulations. Top three run tonight in the SK Modified. Main event, let's go back up to the tower. Well, congratulations goes out to...